Hello lovely learners, welcome back to A Life Learned. I'm very excited and happy to share with you guys, as I'm sure you can tell by the title, that I have finally been able to access a cannabis license. Um, an update to an entry I had given a few months ago, I continue to fight for a re-referral back to the Cannabis Clinic of Canada because I just thought that would be my fastest route. I had looked into other routes when I first found out about it and um, I had actually put my name on a waiting list for a cannabis doctor here in London, Ontario, but I understood that the waiting was going to be like six months to a year, which a long time. And I understood that um, the cannabis clinic was obviously going to be a lot shorter. So um, with that in mind, I got my doctor to basically back me up on my pharmacophobia and re-refer me, but I couldn't get an appointment until January 17th, so waiting list is unfortunately getting longer with the cannabis clinic. Um, but I figured, you know, it's still not too long, so I'll wait. And then, to my surprise, um, a couple weeks ago, I got a phone call from the doctor, the cannabis doctor that I had looked up and found and put my name on the waiting list for. Um, Dr. Mike Hart is his name, and um, he's just like, I guess, registered or notes himself as a specific cannabis doctor. That's what he does. He prescribes cannabis to people. He's not a family doctor or anything like that. He just deals with cannabis. And so they called me up, said my name came up on the list and asked if I wanted an appointment like the next week, which was last Thursday. And I was just like, um, yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was quite excited. Um, did the best I could to get my doctor to forward the proper paperwork to them. Unfortunately, there was a big confusion though, and he forwarded the referral to the cannabis clinic to this other cannabis doctor, and they're completely unrelated. So that was a bit of a headache and a runaround, and I'm still not sure if my doctor has properly faxed the appropriate diagnosis paperwork to Dr. Hart, the cannabis doctor, yet. So, sort of waiting on that for confirmation, which is why I didn't immediately vlog about this. But I still wanted to share with you guys because I'm really excited about the fact that, like, I've done everything that I should have, and I've been completely registered. Even, like, as far as being registered with a registered grower, I have, like, a, an account on their website and everything. Um, they registered me with Tweed, is what they're called. Uh, go Tweed.com if you're curious. Um, that's where I'll be purchasing my medication in the future. Um, but I'm still, I have to confirm tomorrow. I'm not sure if my doctor has faxed that paperwork yet, which makes me a little bit anxious. But as far as I understand, other than that, I'm completely approved, which is awesome. The only unfortunate barrier is being on disability. I obviously can't afford my medications. And so um, thankfully, uh, part of the disability program is covering a lot of my medications, but they only cover very specific brands. So like a lot of times doctors will have to prescribe alternatives to certain prescriptions, which are generally okay, but there, there's no alternative to cannabis and they just don't cover that on disability. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, the understanding of medical cannabis in Canada right now. So it means at best I can get what's called compassionate pricing where they'll give me reduced prices for the strains that will be helpful to me. But um, it also means ultimately that I have to pay for it myself and I just don't have that in my budget right now um, or at all <laughs> really. So that's obviously a difficult thing but I have been getting help in affording cannabis to begin with, uh, just off the street, obviously, before I got my license to help manage my symptoms. So I'll be slowly figuring out a way to get help in uh, getting the medical strains off of this website, Tweed. Um, the doctor said that he thinks uh, specific strains high in CBD would be good for me during the day because it's good for pain relief, but it's not doesn't create as much drowsiness as strains that are high in THC, which would be better for at night to go to sleep. And like, as far as I've understood my research with cannabis, I completely agree. And I'm just so excited to have the opportunity to treat myself properly and not just have to treat with whatever the heck I can get. I, I never know what strain I'm getting when I buy off the street. I mean, I could find out if I wanted to be picky, but it makes things more difficult. And I never know if they're telling the truth, really. So what's the point, right? Um, at least that's the way I see it. Uh, my, my type of purchase off the street, I am a street kid, so I'm not a fool, is as long as it works, <laughs> as long as it's not some kind of crap under someone's, from someone's, you know, garden, 
catnip sort of thing, which I have been sold when I was younger because kids are stupid. But anyways, that aside, as long as it's not catnip, as long as it works, that uh, that's okay with me. You know, I don't complain about strains, so I don't know much about strains. I do know indica seems to work really well for me, and that's what they suggest I use to sleep, and that um, sativa strains often tend to be more high in CBT, CBD. So that's why they're suggesting I do that during the day. So anyway, I'm really excited to be able to properly treat myself soon. It's just right now finances are a bit of a barrier. So hopefully maybe I'll get a couple bucks from someone here or there for Christmas this year. Fingers crossed. Most everyone I know is poor, so probably not. But you know, we'll see. Try to save up over the next month or two. And then maybe I'll finally be able to start medicating myself properly. That'll be really, really nice. I'm kind of excited for that. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Some positive, happy news. Yay. Um, if you guys want to share down below any experiences you have related, whether it's your struggles trying to get a cannabis license or if you're still struggling now um, or, you know, what you use cannabis to treat yourself for or your experience with cannabis. Some people don't have good experiences. It can cause others anxiety. So feel free to share that below if that's your experience. I feel fortunate that I'm not one of those people. Um, that it helps treat my symptoms instead. But yeah, feel anything at all that you feel is relevant to comment below, go ahead. Um, please do share. I do like uh, to hear other people's experiences. And if you have fibro and you find that it's really helpful to treat, feel free to comment that below. That's one of the main conditions I do treat uh, with my cannabis uh, use, as well as um, my PTSD, of course. It's really helpful for depression and anxiety for me. So yeah, uh, any relatable experiences, please feel please feel free to share that. And uh, if you'd like to talk about how you're struggling right now, um, I don't know a whole lot about how to access a cannabis license in Canada because it's different from province to province. Um, but I know things are slowly getting better and I can certainly help when it comes to accessing it in London, Ontario, <laughs> because I've gone through that myself um, and can offer a few little resources just for um, Ontario in general. So if you're curious, please feel free to message me or again, comment below and I'd be happy to talk to you about that. And otherwise, do join me again next week where I try again to share a little something I've learned in life.